kid and you're asking like, what do we do about? Is you sign a contract with someone. So real quick, before you did that, did you... More than 30 years. I got my real estate license in the... Um, and your your origin story. Is that he uh, he made an age joke the last time we were... Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna use that KUKA. You know, I, I'm a little more strict with what I'm, I'm looking at. Uh, One hundred percent. Yeah, don't be afraid to tell people, hey, I'm in here to make money. People know that, you know, unfortunately, that that's how it is. So finding out their reason why I, I've, I, I've already hit this before, but we're going to say it again because this is the most important. If they, you know, find everyone has a reason why they want to sell. OK, everyone does. If they do not have a reason they're not motivated to sell and put them up in a follow-up situation. Put them in a follow-up lead, okay? All right, find a solution to help their situation, okay? Whether it be back taxes, hey, we need, you need to close in two weeks, you know what? Let's try to make that happen, all right? But in doing that, the price has to be lower so we can easily get rid of it like that. Keep that in mind, okay? So. Let's see here. All right. Once you get all that information, I still haven't told you to give them the offer yet because you don't know the true condition. Now, a lot of virtual wholesalers out there will give them an offer right off the bat, first thing, based off of what they say. And I'm not saying that's wrong. And I'm not saying that's right. Everyone has a different way of doing things. That's not the way I do things. Sometimes what I do is I give them a rough ballpark to make sure it's worth actually going out to the appointment. Sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. Okay. But what I want to do is either if I'm doing it virtual, I will call back to possibly even get some photo or I'll set up a, uh, where they can send me some photos. Okay. To give me a rough idea to make, you know, things like that and then get them an offer or if I'm not doing a virtual, if I'm local, I uh, set up a time to go see, uh, to actually have an appointment with them. Okay. Uh, setting up the appointment is actually very important because you get a, you get the chance to meet them face to face. People, people will trust people. They can physically go there and touch. They will trust you more if you're in person. Okay. Not saying virtual is bad by any means. Everyone has their own process. Okay. And within virtual, everyone has their own process of getting photos. People can build rapport just over the phone by all means. Um, it's not, I build rapport over the phone, but um, being virtual is not a situation that I have at this moment. Doesn't mean I, I won't change that. Establishing a renovation cost. So after you go set the appointment based on what they say or whatever, establish a renovation cost. Uh, everyone has their own renovation cost. We will be coming out with a, um, we will be coming out with a uh, Excel spreadsheet that, that you'd be able to purchase and we might give it away a few times. Uh, of a, it's called a calculator. Uh, it's a deal calculator, and we'll have a rough estimate of uh, estimation, rough estimate of um, renovation costs in there, based on square footage, whether it be medium, heavy, or light rehab. Okay, uh, be very careful on that. Um, this is where experience comes in handy. Okay, um, if you want to hear see a, uh, a deal calculator um us offer it by all means reach out uh, you know put in the chat let us know you know we're working on the deal calculator right now so um you know i'm trying to make sure that whatever we put out is going to be the best for everybody all right um you know khalif how do you establish a rental cost um 
I guess there's kind of two ways I do it. Um, mm -hmm. The first way is ultimately on the seller side is when I'm talking to them and getting a feel um, yep. for what you know they want for the property, what their idea of the rental cost is. Because sometimes uh, yep. that's the reason why they're wanting to sell it as, as is, right? They got a quote for the work needed and they can tell you exactly to the T um, how much is needed. Um, yep. And on the back side of that is, you know, your buyers are going to be different based on their exit strategy, being either a hold or a flip, um, mm -hmm. as well as how high end of a, a renovation cost um, they're going to uh, incur flipping the property. So um, on the front end, it's, it's definitely not imperative to have it down to an exact science. Yep. You just want to have a ballpark um, because even you know newer wholesalers get caught up in the weeds with not taking action because of they don't know you know repair cost wise what to do yep um so a good thing is i mean honestly in my opinion is getting in there meeting with the seller getting good pictures getting video then at that point you can uh come back to the lab and mm -hmm. um again with your network kind of reach out to somebody that's a little more seasoned than you or there's apps out here like Angie's Lists and things like that where um, there's contractors and things of that nature uh, that can help you out with figuring out those numbers. Sometimes they'll, they'll even come to the appointment with you to give you a free quote um, to figure that out. So I guess I say all that to say the most important part on figuring out renovation costs is, is getting that appointment and getting in there. Yep. Um, because you can always circle back around um, and even sometimes it's a negotiating tactic if you have no idea and you may lock it up too high because now you've had somebody walk through let you know what's it going to cost to put it together and kind of have that meeting in the minds with the seller and that's actually one important thing is is that you know dealing with experience and then also dealing with your buyers say you did lock it up too high and you think the renovation cost is going to be 20 grand and you tell your buyer your buyer comes to you and just they they don't give you an offer or they just blatantly lose uh they blatantly just don't answer you what i would do and what i I've, I've done this in the past is i say hey i understand this might deal might not be a good fit for you but tell me why tell me is it the renovation cost is it you know what what do you expect the renovation cost to be on this project and you know what would you what price would make it work for you and if that would be something if that's the only hiccup for you and by listening to that feedback and by listening to enough of that that is what will make you a better wholesaler that is what makes you better on the next deal as well and helps you maybe if you have an offer from this guy who says, you know what, you put it out there at 50K and you estimate the budget of 15 or 20K for a, a renovation. They come back and say, this is going to be a 40K renovation all day long. This would be a deal for me at like 40. Okay. You know, so now what can you do? You can go back and say, if I can get this down to 40 for you, okay? Um, and say say you got it locked up for 40, all right? And you're trying to sell it for 50. Now you can go back to the seller, get a price reduction and say, if we give you, if I, if you give me this price reduction, we'll close in however long your buyer just told you you can close in. A week, two days, three days, four days, okay? whatever the whatever the case may be now you might not make as much as you wanted to make say you had a 10k spread and that just ate up all your 10k but now you got to go for a price reduction and now you'd only make 5k well guess what 5k and a fast closing a guaranteed closing is better than nothing you know so that's the way I, i've done that with some deals where I'm not putting it out a second time. I listen to my buyers who came through and walked through it. So um, 
that's where you need to make sure you communicate with your buyers and don't just blow them off when when they say sorry is it the price is too high you know so um with that how to run comps i'm gonna tell you i could do a whole episode on how to run comps all right a whole episode it's an art it's a it's a skill in an art form it really is okay in detroit it is in my opinion detroit is probably one of the hardest uh cities to run comps in uh what do you think Clay? yeah it can be a challenge um if you're not in you know uh i guess the to split it up you have your wholesale zones mm -hmm. um your rehab and your prehab zones and then you have you know the war zones when you get yes. down into the war zones um they may be easier to comp because all the houses are selling for pretty much next to nothing um mm -hmm. and that's why you want to stay out of that's why it's labeled the war zones um when you get into your wholesale zones it's a little bit more challenging because just this part of uh the midwest um especially detroit is heavy on the rental side yes so you may get into a, a area where you can't find any sold comparables because a lot of the homes are either rentals or um it's a block of homeowners you know that have been there forever yep. um so it, it's tough it's tough to comp them out um in detroit so to your point it is more of an art from just yes. experience of being in the field and again you know leaning on your buyers that you find that buying that area to see what they're paying for them and that's the most thing most important thing is talking to your buyers trying to figure out what they're paying okay in the suburbs you can start off with a half a mile out and don't cross major roads or, or anything like that um your, your normal comping videos out there if you look back in the beginning of the year one of the first videos or actually one of the last videos we did at the end of last year um, on my youtube channel is we actually did a comping video in De for detroit and the metro detroit area by all means go back and look at it we'll do another one later on but it is it, it will help you at least in that area and if you don't know how much reach out to your network for instance you can reach out to me you can reach out to Khalif and say hey what do you think this house will go for this is the condition this is you know blah 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 um you know they're looking to get this I'll tell you what I think I could we could sell it for and you know what you should get us you know under contract for but the thing is is that if you come to me and you ask me that and then you say you got under contract where I think I could sell it for and you want to sell it for more i'm probably going to tell you to kick rocks no offense it's just <laughs> you didn't listen you know i get that all the time what do you <laughs> you get that too khalif yeah and i i think that's just a, a a fear piece which comes to bite you in the butt because you tell you know somebody gives you ask your opinion and say hey i think we can sell this for 40 to 50k right 50k yep. being a, 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 a long shot and yep. they go back to the seller starting low and then are so scared to to lose the potential deal they offer on the far end of the spectrum and then come back to you hey i gotta lock it up but it's like you got locked up for where i said we can move it at so exactly ultimately you you're gonna spin your wheels trying to move it because we yep. already figured what it would sell for and then you're going back to the seller anyway to try to get a reduction so you know i was taught i can't remember by who but you know it, it's kind of have the mind frame to always be closing but yep. always be willing to walk away if the numbers don't make sense because in the long run you just end up spending more time not getting it locked up for the right price and you know you wear out buyers um yep. because you know you're taking them through a property where you know it's priced too high and you're wearing the seller out because you know you're promising them x number when you know that's a long shot where you should you know be truthful with them at the number that makes sense that you know you can execute what you said quickly efficiently 
Mm -hmm. um, you know, get the house off of their hands and get them a check and, instead of, you know, eating up essentially that due diligence period just to come back to them, you know, to let them know that uh, you may need to go another direction. Once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room